Hi, everyone. Welcome back to this tutorial. Um, today, we're going to be talking about um, the Cura software um, for 3D printing. So after you, Gabby. Great. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Alicia. So, excuse me. Yes, um, I'm going to show the um, the preparation of a, a 3D model um, for the printer. I'm using as an example the software that we use for the Ultimaker printer. This is one of the, the several printers that we have in the um, University of London's Senate House makerspace, but um, it's it's a very common piece of software. So, um, excuse me. Um, so it, the, the functionality will be very similar to pretty much any other tool you might you might um, need to use. Um, and as Salish um, says, this, this tool is called Cura, and this is specifically the Ultimaker Cura um, version for the Ultimaker 3 extended printer. The first thing you can um, the first thing you can see on the screen here is that um, it's giving you a simulation of the bed of the 3D printer. So the size of this 3D printer bed is about 25 by 25 centimeters. And so that's the grid we're seeing in front of us there. The 3D model we create will appear on the visualization of the bed. And that's where um, you know, we can move it around to where we want it to actually print on the printer itself. The 3D file that we're creating using this will be, um, will be taken um, and uh, can either be sent by, uh, by the internet or can be taken on a USB stick or an SD card and attached to the printer and, and set up to print um, directly from there. And this file contains not only the dimensions and the, the geometry of the 3D model, but other instructions for the printer, such as the temperature at which to print it, the quality at which to print it, in some cases, which um, of the nozzles of the printer to use, which impacts on what color it ends up being printed. Some, some models may be printed using a combination of print from multiple nozzles um, and so forth. So you can, you, you can give all sorts of complex instructions about how you want it to print, as well as just what the 3D model is you, you've got. So the, the simple thing we do to start with is we take a 3D model that, that already exists, um, and the best file formats to use for this are either STL or OBJ. And I'm going to take a file that, um, that I've created um, in, uh, in a previous exercise. Um, and uh, actually, I need to find the file that I created in a previous exercise. Um, so OK, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to use the file that, 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 that created file. I'm going to use the, the original file that I started from, which which was this um, this Gecko file called Gecko Even Better, and I'm just going to drag and drop that into um, the window, and you can see the um, the file has appeared there. Um, and if I were just to send it to print now, um, it would be very awkward as it was trying to print it standing up like this, and so it would have to print supports underneath the almost the entire model. As you can see, this model has, as I zoom in, um, has been created with a flat base, which means it, it will print with a, the 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 barest minimum amount of support necessary. Um, but it will only do that if we have it set the right way around. So these options, if I select the model, then these options on the left become available. Um, and I can move the object around, I can resize the object, or I can rotate the object. And if I rotate the object, I can either free rotate it, um, I can select a face to align to the build plate, or I can lay it flat on the build plate. So I want to do both. I want to select the face to align to the build plate, which is that, that face. And then I just want to make sure that it's lying flat, um, which it probably was anyway, but, um, but it definitely is now. Um, and so that the object is now set flat on the build plate. If I print it, the only parts of it which are likely to cause a problem for printing are possibly the underside of its face. And although even that, it can probably print without, without too much difficulty. But, but I might, to be on the safe side, put some supports underneath, underneath there. Um, th if, I, if I'm happy with the size that it's printing at, um, I, can, um, I can stick to that. But if I want to resize it, I can say, let's just make the, the whole thing um, a bit bigger. I can make it a lot bigger in this case, or I can make it even smaller. Um, and you'll see that it will resize it automatically over here. It's 55% of its original size. Um, it's now only 40 millimeters um, along this x-axis thing. Um, so effectively the longest, the longest axis. But let's let's take it back to somewhere closer to 100% because I quite liked it at that large size. It's 103%, but that's um, that's 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 fine. 
I could just have pressed undo to, to take it back to where it started, but um, but this is this is fine. Um, so I could then just print it using its default settings. Um, the print the print default settings up here are saying fast, which is uh, 0.2 millimeter layers, which is to say it'll print five layers of filament per millimeter on the um, uh, on the object, and that's that's the lowest quality that this printer offers. It's giving me 15% infill, which means it, it'll print the object with a hard shell, but inside the object, it will only um, it will only print about 15% of the density of solid um, filament. This um, this is usually fine. Um, you print somewhere between you know 20% and 50% density, depending on how solid solid and strong you need the object to be. 15% um, is probably fine for for an object like this, especially if I was going to print this as an earring, then I. Um, I might well want it to be quite light so that it doesn't pull too hard on my ear. It's printing without supports um, and it's not printing any extra adhesion features. Um, and I can show you what all of those things uh, mean briefly. Um, but that's effectively fine. I mean, I think I would actually just go ahead and print it like this. But let me just show you some of those options um, in a bit more detail. So the, um, the various different qualities we can print it at. Fast is the one that we have selected. If I want this to look quite nice, I'd probably go to fine, which is twice as um, twice as dense. So it's printing um, 10 layers of filament per millimeter instead of five. So you'll see, you can picture that will give you a smoother surface. And um, you can go to F extra fine, which will print something um, something like what 16 layers per per millimeter but that that's that's maybe not necessary but let's say okay i want i want this to be quite good quality um i'm going to go to fine quality you can see that the layer height is, is kept down here the wall thickness it's printing just under a millimeter thick but and that's that's the the solid wall that it creates before it starts printing infill on the inside and that 0.8 um of a millimeter is um is two um two layers of of filament, the, the horizontal um, thickness of the filament is different than the vertical thickness of it. Um, the other dimensions of layers, we've, these have all been selected by the fact that we selected fine up there, it's just telling us what they are, we don't need to change them. The infill density, um, let's say we want that to be a little bit um, more robust, so I'm going to say 25%. Um, and the infill pattern, that doesn't matter that much. Something like zigzag or triangles is quite um, is quite strong, um, but um, but it doesn't matter. They all print relatively relatively quickly. Um, the printing temperature you probably don't want to play around with, and the the printing speed. These are again generated by the quality at which you're printing. Um, if I was printing um, at a faster quality, it would probably print a bit bit a bit faster print speed and a slightly higher temperature in order to to do so. But the quality would would suffer as a as a result. Um, so let's leave all these other things. Um, B, um, generate supports. I said before, I don't think it needs supports. If we wanted to tell it to, to generate supports, um, it would then give us the very op various options of, of, um, of where and how many supports to, to generate. But I'm going to say, I don't think we need supports. Um, and it says, do we want any build plate adhesion? So you can either give the object like a, a brim, which means it'll print a little layer around the outside of the object, which makes the base of the object larger, and therefore the object sticks to the print bed more reliably. Um, that is then something you'll have to cut off and clean um, afterwards. And since this is a fairly small and a fairly flat um, object anyway, I don't think it needs it. Um, and as I want it to look quite nice, I'd rather not have to sort of be cutting it off and filing it. So I'm going to turn that off as well and say no build plate adhesion needed. So I've, I've selected all those options. I haven't really changed anything except for the quality. Um, I'm then just going to let's let's um, let's hide that um, again. If I then press slice, this is generating the um, the instructions to the printer. So this is this is what it's done. If it sends this instructions to the printer, it will take one hour, 11 minutes to print. It will use five grams of filament, which is about 60 cent two centimeters of the filament, which is 2.85 millimeters thick. And um, I, I can ask it to, to preview it. Um, and this is um, this is showing you, I mean, it's, it's easier to see if we zoom right in. This is showing you the actual strokes um, of, of each layer and line of filament as it prints and you can see um, that there is a bit of texture on the surface there um, and if i had said i wanted to print supports it would be showing us the ports if i've been saying i want to print a brim it would show us the brim on there but um 
but we didn't we didn't ask for for any of those things. Um, I then say save to disk, and I you know I can I can have the the G code file, which is the instructions for the printer, saved to a disk, or I can save it directly to my USB stick, and I can then walk with my USB stick across the the room to the printer, and print my little gecko here. And as I say, with other printers, you would use different software, but the, the, the basic principle will be, will be very similar. Most of those options I've shown you were sort of for, for completeness. You um, quite often you can sort of use the default settings and it'll, it'll work just fine. It is quite important to make sure you're using the right software for the printer. If I create G-code using the Ultimaker Cura and I try to run this on one of our other 3D printers, which also uses Cura as its software, but not the Ultimaker Cura, it could cause a problem. It may just ignore it. It may say, you know, I, I can't read these instructions, or it may say, okay, I can read these instructions, but because they're designed for another printer, all sorts of horrible things can happen. You could even damage your printer. So best best to, to you know be super careful about what software you're using to create your, your G code. That's a good word, Warren. Yeah. Um, and yeah, if you have any more um, questions about 3D printing, or um, be sure to look at our previous tutorial, um, I think titled 3D Printing, um, for more information about why we do this and um, different filaments that go into um, 3D printers. I think this one is a, a PLA filament, but um, uh, yeah, great. Thank you so much. Thanks, Alicia.